What's up everyone, Neil again with another installment of the Energy Academy. So, now we know how the generation mix or generation stack is determined, it's time to look at how those generators make money. Over 90% of electricity trades occur in advance of delivery between generators and suppliers on what's known as forward or futures markets. Forward and futures markets allow participants to contract a price today for electricity that will be delivered at some point in the future. These contracts come in all different shapes and sizes. But what's the point in contracting to sell electricity now that won't actually move through wires and cables for another, say, two years? Well, these contracts essentially reduce risk. Generators get the security of knowing that someone will buy their electricity, and suppliers have the security of knowing that they'll have some of the electricity they need to meet their customers' demands. And by locking in the price well ahead of delivery, generators and suppliers reduce their exposure to continually changing and often volatile spot market prices. But how do they actually work? Let's start by outlining the difference between forward and futures trades. These are often mixed up due to the similar nature and outcomes of the market, but there are some important distinctions to be made. While both forward and futures include an agreement to deliver energy at some point in the future, they differ based on how standardized the contracts are. So let's start with forward trades. These are the trades with less standardized contracts. A forward contract is simply a contract between two parties who agree to buy and sell electricity at an agreed price on a set date. As I mentioned in the previous series, this is sometimes referred to as over-the-counter trading. Once agreed, the price is locked in. So it doesn't matter how the price changes between agreement and delivery or what the price is on the day of delivery. Then, once the date arrives, the agreed volume of electricity is delivered for the pre-agreed price. This form of trading allows for the customization of certain contract terms, such as contract duration and delivery period. Let's set out an example. Here's what a forward contract might look like. The seller or generator agrees to deliver 100 megawatts of electricity 24-7 across the whole month of, say, September 2025 and is paid £200 per megawatt hour to do so by the buyer or supplier. This continuous generation of consistent capacity across 24 hours is known as baseload, but I'll go into that in more detail shortly. When September 2025 rolls around, the seller generates 100 megawatts of electricity at all times and is paid the agreed £200 per megawatt hour to do so. Alternatively, the seller may agree to deliver the energy at more specific, granular times. Instead of delivering baseload, i.e. the same amount of electricity across 24 hours, the seller may agree to deliver certain volumes at certain times. As an example, it may agree to deliver 100 megawatts during certain four-hour periods and then 50 megawatts during others and agree to different prices for both. Even though that's a gross oversimplification, that's essentially how forward trades work. But what do I mean by futures? Well, like forward contracts, futures trades are for electricity to be delivered at some point in the future. However, the contracts are more standardized and less flexible. That's because they're traded on an exchange. There are a variety of products that you can buy and sell on futures exchanges. For example, on the Intercontinental Exchange, or ICE, there are two futures products that can be traded in Great Britain. The first is UK-based electricity futures. This is electricity traded 24 hours a day, so base load, seven days a week. The other is UK peak electricity futures. This is electricity traded during peak hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday to Friday. In both cases, delivery is required across a full month and can be traded as far as five years in advance of delivery. Generally, the further in advance that something is traded, the longer the agreed delivery period. So, if you're trading two years in advance of delivery, you likely be trading base load across full months. But if you're trading two days ahead of delivery, you're more likely to be looking at more granular delivery periods, four-hour windows known as ether blocks or even just single hours. Anyway, 
all this talk of timing is probably getting a little confusing. With that in mind, now feels like a pretty good time to take a detour. In the next episode, I'll be outlining the timings of what's known as the E for Day, so that you can get a better picture of the types of granularities that electricity is traded at. I'll see you there.